Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. As our story opens, the Penguin has moved up into high society. Oh, yes, infinitely. And a leading man, my dear Mrs. Van Clymer. Just tremendous power, would you Absolutely say? inspired, my dear Penguin. He's a known criminal who's been in the local prison. How did this come about? Oh, right, he also has tons of money. That excuses just about anything. Wouldn't you say so? Hands up, everybody, and you won't get hurt. Except maybe that. This guy seems to have something specific in mind. You, unhook that Roby pendant. Throw it here. Of all things, the penguin challenges him. Wise guy, huh? Take this. <laughs> Jumping jeepers. A bulletproof umbrella. Ah! <laughs> Isn't it handy that he just happened to have the bulletproof one that particular day? That doesn't smell like a setup at all. Gosh, no. Penguin returns the pendant. May I? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, how can I ever, ever thank you? Oh, oh Penguin, can I lay your eggs? Get a room. And who do you think the necklace belongs to? Miss Sophia Starr. Sophia Starr? Beauteous queen of Gotham City society? That's her. They left the theater hand in hand. So they did get a room. Gordon and O'Hara know that Batman is the only one who can figure out what the Penguin is up to by foiling a crime and leaving the play with the city's hottest rich redhead. Things that Gordon calls ominous. Listen, sports. Um, excuse me, sir, but there's a telephone call for you. A certain Mr. Rhyme, sir. Rhyme? Yes, sir. A Mr. K. Rhyme, uh, if you understand me. Of course. Mr. K. Rhyme with a red hot line of investments for the Wayne Foundation. Precisely, sir. Dick, it's about time you started learning something about the elements of investment. We may be a while, Aunt Harriet. Mr. K. Rhyme might want us to visit him at the stock exchange. So long, Aunt Harriet. See you later. Mr. K. Rhyme. Subtle, Alfred. Fortunately, Aunt Harriet is blissfully clueless, while Dick can't hide his, oh boy, I'm gonna go get into trouble, grin. K-Rhyme? Sounds like crime. Isn't that funny, Alfred? I'd be very careful about him if I were Bruce. <laughs> Indeed, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Someone please get me out of here. <laughs> Bruce takes the call from the commissioner. The penguin. Holy nick of time. Lucky for us, we just finished installing the bulletproof windshield in the Batmobile. Not so lucky for the Penguin. They only just thought to give it a bulletproof windshield. How long have they been doing this? While they head for the police station, Gordon and O'Hara are questioning the guy Penguin nabbed. They're trying to get him to admit the Penguin put him up to it, but he's not talking. A hard-baked cookie, this one. Covered with armor plate icing. Let's give him a turn, shall we? I can honestly say that I have never heard anyone called a hard-baked cookie covered in armor-plated icing before. Or since. Once again, no combination of words is too dumb to give it a try. And neither is any goofy interrogation technique. Hey, what's the matter, Sonny? Scared of the dark? Six-foot tall bats! You have got to be kidding! Holy knockout drops! The miserable weakling faded dead away. No, he bashed his head on the wall and knocked himself out, world's greatest detective. You watched it happen! So now there's only one thing to do, and that's go after the penguin directly because this guy is never going to wake up, I guess. The police have had a tail on him. He's just entered the Millionaires Club. Batman and Robin head over there to protect the poor, defenseless millionaires. In the steam room, we see the penguin foiling yet another crime. A snatch in the fog, eh? Alas, you sad, dim-witted ruffian! 
in. Hey, the smoke screen. It's gone. Cheese it. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. They tried to kidnap me. It's all right, Reggie, my boy. You're safe now. You were the penguin. Batman and Robin charge in, but Reggie explains what happened. They smell another setup because he got rid of the steam by using his umbrella loaded with dry ice. He must have known about the supposed kidnapping. Otherwise, why would he be carrying an umbrella loaded with dry ice? The reason is the season, Batman. What? This prematurely hot weather annoys me. Being a penguinish kind of a bird, I hate hot weather. So what would be more natural that I should carry an umbrella loaded with dry ice? Penguin is really in your face about all this. He's taunting Batman and Batman can't do anything because Penguin hasn't done anything wrong. You'd think he might get the message that it's better to back off and wait for Penguin to tip his hand, but no. And the more he pushes, the more Penguin loves it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm just fly. I'm very busy. I have a little rendezvous with Sophia Star. We have some arrangements to make. Arrangements? For her jewels. I'm taking over their protection. They got a lot more than a room. Maybe she really is laying his eggs. Allow me to give you my card. <laughs> I do. Come on, my dear boy. Oh, you saved my life, Penguin. If there's anything I can do... Penguin. Protective Agency Incorporated. Holy leopard. What a change of spots. Face it, guys. It appears he's gone straight. So back off and wait to see what he does. But Batman can't do that, so he comes up with a plan. Replace Ms. Star's jewels with fakes that have been irradiated so they can be traced. The only problem is they don't know what her jewels look like. So it's time to pull out the secret weapon. Alfred. What? Reggie Rich gave you a check for $10,000 and you tore it up? His name is Reggie Rich. Indeed, indeed. And right in front of his very eyes. You know something? Mm -hmm. This plane at being a straight guy must have unhinged the penguin's mind. Why, you bird brain? What's 10000 when I aim at millions? Confidence. That is what I am stealing from these dupes. Confidence and pride in a penguin. And they will end up handing me their treasure on a silver plate. As Penguin plans go, that's pretty lame. Yeah, but I wonder... You wonder what? Well, well don't get mad at me, Penguin, yeah. but I wonder what Batman and Robin's gonna have to say about that. Piddling pear will be punctured now and forever. No, no, no offense, Penguin, but we've heard you sing that song before. Yeah, and it's always us who end up singing the anvil chorus in the pen. But that line makes up for it. Penguin explains that he's not going to steal Sophia Starr's jewels, but he doesn't say exactly what he is going to do. He knows Batman will be setting a trap for him regarding those jewels, and he's ready for it. He heads over to Sophia's. Plot and counterplot. Here's Alfred carrying out a vital but risky chore in the guise of a man from Floyd's Insurance Limited. Excellent. I think that just about does it, Miss Starr. You're sure there's nothing else you want, Mr. Smedley Joe? <laughs> no, thank you. No, that will just complete our records. He's got all the pictures he needs so they can duplicate the jewels. Time to get out of there. Ah, uh, <laughs> Beg pardon, Pengy, darling? Pengy. It amazes me that high society allows him to go by the name Penguin. First name, The. We do know his real name in the canonical stories, but this series never even implies that he has a real name. Then again, if my name was Oswald Cobblepot, I might want to go by something else, too. Great Scott, Alfred. Have you forgotten? Batman told you to switch cigarette holders with the Penguin. You're meant to palm off the trick one with the tiny superpower transmitter inside. Quick, before it's too late. Create that diversion! As he heads for the door, he drops his camera case and it explodes with a big cloud of smoke. While Penguin does something with his umbrella to neutralize something, Alfred switches the cigarette holder. <laughs> oh, look, the handle of your umbrella. What? Sounds! My secret radio detector. Somebody has planted an electronic bug in this room. While Alfred just stands there when he could have slipped out half a dozen times, Penguin sweeps the room. He finds the bug and destroys it, then confronts Alfred. It can happen to the best of us, Mr. Penguin, sir. One moment, everything's going smoothly. And the next, fate pulls the rug out from under us. Ah, Penguin! Good day, miss. Does Batman remember what happened the last time he tried to plant a bug anywhere near Penguin? 
Why did he think it would work this time? And just like last time, he's doing all this in spite of the fact that the Penguin has done nothing. He's getting cozy with the super babe of the wealthy circuit. That's it. I don't get why they have to be in his face like this. You know, considering this show, I may regret installing that thing. In spite of everything, they have the picture and they make the fake jewels. Time to go plant them. We're sure taking a chance, Batman. What's the matter? Soles of your boots slippery? Heck no. I mean, when we put the fake jewels in Miss Star's safe, take the real ones out, we could be nailed as crooks. Gee, that would really be bad. Good thing Penguin didn't think of it. That's a chance we have to take, Robin. In our well-ordered society, protection of private property is essential. Yes, you're right, Batman. That's the keystone of all law and order. Right. That's why the Declaration of Independence says our inalienable rights are life, liberty, and the protection of our stuff. Let's go, Jim. Of course, Penguin did think of it. In fact, he counted on it. Now, Batman and Robin are full members of the police department in this world, so all they have to do is explain to Gordon what they're going to do and their butts are covered. As if our Batman would think of that. Now they're fugitives. Penguin calls Gordon just to rub his nose in it, then invites him to a big party he's throwing tonight. Commissioner. Gotham Amusement Pier, tonight. Penguin's tossing a party. Interesting. You'd better not be there, Batman. If you're spotted, I'll have to arrest you. Batman and Robin take off their costumes, head back up to the house, and Bruce continues teaching Dick how to play golf. End of episode. That's our only hope, Robin. We'll have to catch Penguin in something crooked, and he won't be able to press that warrant for our arrest. I have an awful thought, Batman. What? What if Penguin really has gone straight? He says they have to catch Penguin doing something crooked. How about you lay low until he does something crooked, then catch him? He's got a high enough profile now that if he did pull something at this party, all those rich, influential friends of his could pool their considerable resources, hunt him down, and do very bad things to him. Penguin's not stupid, unlike his nemesis. What do you think, Batman? He's with Sophia Starr, and she's wearing those priceless diamonds. Yeah, I have a strange feeling. It's time for the kill. Robin's timing is perfect as usual. Cement filled umbrella sure cooled him off. He sounds surprised. Batman really needs to turn that cowl into a helmet. He spends way too much time nursing lumps on his head. Well done, my thanks. Well done. What now, Penguin? String him up here, back of the shooting gallery, directly behind the cutouts. Right. With real bullets in the gallery guns, of course. We have our cliffhanger. Batman and Robin, a swinging pair of dead ducks. What on earth can save them? Don't shoot, Commissioner! Don't shoot! And of course, it can't be just anybody who fires the fatal shots. All set, my honeys? We're set. Now, on my instructions. Ready? Aim. Good grief! Good night! Double funeral tomorrow. Same back time, same back channel. Can you see any way out? I can see several. Now, back then? Well, okay, I can see several then, too. The only question is which one we use. We'll find that out next time. I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac.